Hello and welcome to Be a Tier, the German Engineer. Today we are back with episode 28 of season 2 of our current Let's Play series and this is of course Oxygen not included. Yes, today we are going to jump right into it because we have a lot of work to do. For example, all the way down here on the bottom. Yes, right here. This here is our Steam Vent Tamer. And the Steam Vent Tamer here, yeah, there are a lot of questions in the comments about how to actually properly start it up. So that is exactly what we are going to explore today. We will take a look what we can do here and exactly how to properly start it, even in an environment like this here. So let's see. We have temperatures of negative 60 degrees down here. And we need to get this thing here really, really hot. The good thing is that all the pickup commands for the ice are already given. That is highly important. So I would say let's take a look at our autonomous rocket. And here is our rocket just leaving orbit from the last time when we launched it. And it is currently, let's take a look here, 1.8 cycles away from reaching the sandy ore field over here and actually starts mining. And that is, of course, completely autonomous. Yes, there is no pilot. There is no dupe. There is no nothing. So we will take another look at this thing here when it actually arrives at the ore field and we will see how it mines. Meanwhile, down here on the bottom, yes, I have found quite an issue. Look at this here. Yes, all of these Atmos suits have no oxygen because the incoming oxygen, not F6, but F7, yeah, it is nowhere near enough to support all the construction that we have going on on the bottom. So we need to do something about it here. Insulate a gas pipe. We're going to come over here, uh, probably going to go up here and then all the way into there. Something just like this here. And then, of course, we need a gas bridge, one right here and one right there. And as soon as this here is built, we can just turn on these two gas pumps right here, which will deliver one kilogram per second extra over here to our Atmos suits. So that is going to be very good. And I hope this here gets built very, very quickly. And now right here in cycle 541, yes, all of our insulatic gas pipes are done. So let's take the signal switch, turn it on and then go to our overlay and turn that on as well. And now we can actually play the game and we should be seeing, yeah, here we go. A lot of oxygen is coming. It's coming all the way through to the top and now it is getting fed into our atmos suits. And that is exactly what we want. So let's slow it down a little bit and then go down all the way to the bottom. Now that we are getting more oxygen, we can get this here done a hell of a lot quicker. But there is one more thing that we need to do. And that is right here. We need insulated tiles coming all the way down to the floor. Some ladders right here. And of course, the fire pole can't be missed either. And then right here, we're going to dig this up. And there's a good reason for it. You can see all this heat that we have up here. Yes, 55 degrees Celsius, 50 degrees. It is really, really hot. And I'm trying to get as much of that heat to come down here as far as possible. Of course, all this ice here is currently preventing that. But as soon as that's gone, every single degree will help us. So we need to make sure we get as much heat in here as we can. So dupes, please get it done. And cycle 543 has just started and we can see the dupes have built all of this here, dug it out, cleaned it up and already made it almost all the way through here, just down here on the bottom. Yeah, we are not looking too hot yet, but that is okay. Let's take a look at our star map. And here we are. And let's take a look here. Yes, we are actually extracting resources. And to be precise, that is at 7.5 kilograms per second and cargo capacity remaining is at 8.4 tons. So when we just keep on moving, we can see we are drilling down here on the bottom, which costs us a tiny little bit of diamond every single time. But that is okay and no problem at all. As long as we have diamond, we are golden. And this is how our autonomous rocket works. As soon as the cargo capacity is full, we are just sending it back home and we're going to do this over and over. But let's check back in on our steam vent tamer. And now in cycle 545, basically all the ice is removed, which means we can start on the next step here very, very shortly. But yeah, I just discovered another problem. Take a look at this here in our main base, all the way on the top here, our water reservoir. Yeah, it is a little bit low, but that is no problem because we have tons and tons and tons of water coming in as soon as this ice here melts. But that is the actual problem. Yes, the melting ice, because this ice here is at negative 82 degrees currently. And yeah, I am genuinely worried that it will freeze our water reservoir here. So we need to do something about that right away. We will get started with where we at. Let's take a look here. In utilities, we need a liquid tepidizer and I'm just going to plop it. Yeah, why not? Right around here. That should be fine. And we're going to make it out of anything. It does not matter. 
power though. Power could be a slightly bigger problem. I don't think we have any free lines here now. Absolutely nothing that we could use for this purpose, but that is okay. So what are we gonna do is we're just gonna grab us a large power transformer and plop it right here. And we're gonna build us a few tiles down here on the bottom. Something just like this here. Should be simple enough. Gonna grab us heavy conductive wire, hook it up. Gonna grab us a normal conductive wire and come all the way through the base. Yeah, just along here should be fine. Then continue over here, all the way down here and into there. Yeah, that'll do. And then in automation, we will need an automation wire and the wire where we're gonna put this thing. I would like to put it as far over here as I can, something like this here. And of course, we need a thermal sensor. So let's do precisely that. Last but not least, though, before I forget it later, I need a conductive wire bridge right here. So, dupes, let's get this here built so we can actually keep this water here at a halfway reasonable temperature. Down here on the bottom, we are making very good progress. So let's take a quick look at it because I did make a couple additions. For example, over here on the left, yes, yeah, so right here, this here was all ice and uh, carbon dioxide that was actually frozen. Extremely cold, negative 100 degrees. Certainly not something we want. So I put in some insulated tiles, just like that. And I also got ready to create a vacuum in here later. I put in a gas pump here and a vacuum pump right there, all hooked up to power. Very simple, I snipped it off, of course, and then F7, just aligned to literally anywhere, just so we can vent this area here out. But we are not quite there yet. So first of all, right here, this pod lamp here, we're going to set it to liquid uh, crude oil number nine, enable auto bottle, so we can get some oil into here. Not only for the liquid lock, but the oil is coming from over here at about 80 degrees Celsius, which is also going to help us to introduce a higher temperature in that area. Next on the list is up here on the right. I added some metal tiles made out of aluminum. And once again, the reason is heat. All this igneous rock is at about, what, 88 degrees, 90 degrees, something along those lines. And I'm trying to leak all this temperature into here. Well, not all of it, but at least as much as we can. The more, the merrier. Once again, we need to get this here warm, but you can already see the temperature is currently at about negative 42.3 degrees Celsius. So it has already heated up quite drastically. And we can also see that we have actually liquid carbon dioxide here. It is not frozen anymore. So let's get this in here, this oil. And at the same time, let's take a look at the F6 overlay. Yes, the piping here is done all the way through. So we can actually hook this here up. And what we are going to do is this here's polluted water. Yes, we are going to feed the polluted water along this pipe all the way through and all the way into our liquid reservoir right here. And we are going to fill the thing all the way to the top. Yes, we're going to top it off completely because we are trying to get as much fluid in here as we can. The more fluid we have, the hotter we can get our thermo aqua tuner. And that is exactly what we need. So let's get all of that done. And then we can start with the next phase once this area here is heated up. If you would build this, it would hopefully not be in such a cold environment. So most of those steps here are not really necessary, at least not the ones to heat up the area, because the area will already be at a reasonable ambient temperature. So keep that in mind when you do your own build. And now the water has arrived and our thermo aqua tuner, we are going to let it turn on. We are going to generate a little bit of heat, but we are going to monitor it very closely. We're currently at negative five degrees and we are going to wait until like, I don't know, maybe 80 or 100 degrees. Doesn't really matter too much though, because it's made out of steel. So we have a little bit of leeway, but about 100 degrees. Yeah, that would be nice if we could reach that with our thermo tuner, just so we can release all that heat here into the environment. That is exactly what we want to do. Then we are going to take this liquid thermal sensor right here and set it to below negative five degrees Celsius, which is going to be the setting that we are actually going to use. But we will see here. Let's see, come on, a little bit more heat. Of course, it is stalking back and forth. That's why it takes a little bit longer than usual. We can also increase the speed here. So let's do precisely that. And now we are at about 100 degrees, 112 degrees. We're going to pause the game, set this here to below, and it will stay there until we actually turn the system back on. And now we can immediately see the heat radiating from this area. And now if we get a little bit of oil in, it will be even better. Slowly but steadily, we are heating all of this here up. And you can see the top is already hot just from the polluted water. And now down here, we are looking really, really good. So let's take a peek. We have the crude oil here. It is not quite a liquid lock yet, but we are getting there. Temperature wise, yes, our oil is releasing heat. And in here, it's also not looking bad. Here I have three bottle emptiers on the bottom and we will need each one in turn. 
first the left one right here. This here is to distribute heat. Then the middle one and the right one together at the same time. But we need to get more heat into here because if we dump the water now, it would freeze. And especially we have a little bit of a problem here. We have a piece of granite. And this granite is at negative 52.9 degrees Celsius, which means we will need a little bit of a heat source in here so we can actually heat this here up. Yeah, that will be a problem. But we will cross that bridge when we get there. For right now, I have snipped off this uh, insulated liquid pipe right here all the way over here on the left so we can actually empty it out or better to say fill this here up. And it is almost full, 4,360 kilograms, and it can hold up to 5,000. So that should be just enough or maybe just over or under. Either way is perfectly fine. So let's let this here run and then let's put about 120 or so kilograms of water into here. Something along the lines should be perfectly fine for the first chamber. And now down here we are ready for the next stage. So let's take a look one more time. We have our crude oil in here. We have a wonderful liquid lock and right here we have about 140 kilograms of water which is still perfectly fine. And we are just going to mirror this here on the right side. In the middle, though, we need to be very careful. We want as little water as possible. So we are going to turn this one here on. Yes, got to actually click it. That would help. Then water, number nine, enable auto bottle. And then we're going to copy the settings over to here. This right side here doesn't matter. About 140 kilograms, 120, that is perfectly fine. But here in the middle, we need just enough to cover the floor. That is it. Just a couple of hundred grams per tile is more than enough. But for that to be actually possible, we need to heat up the water here on the left quite drastically. So I'm going to turn this here on and I'm trying to get the water over here to about 80 degrees Celsius. Then I'm going to turn the thermal aqua tuna back off. At least that is the general idea for right now. And now right here, our water temperature is at about 50 degrees. So we are slowly but steadily getting there. I had to turn the bottle emptier back off though. Yeah, because the dupes were already bringing water and that is not good. And the bottle empty on the right here is hard at work. And we already have about 100 kilograms in here. My goodness. Yeah, that is what that looks like. But right, let's take a look at our star map. What is our rocket here doing? Yeah, look at this here. Cannot store resources. And that is because all cargo bays are full. That is, of course, a problem. But what can we do about it? Well, we can send it home and then we can empty it. So, little rocket, go on your merry way. Go home. You will be back on Ingenium in about 3.0 cycles. And then we will await your arrival and see what we can do with you next. Right at the moment, I have the game paused because this is very important. We have Cromulent Green right here and he's currently putting water into this bottle empty right here. Our water is only at 70 degrees right now, but that should be good. I hope we are about to find out, I guess. So, Cromulent Green, you are going to put water in there and the water is going to pour out relatively quickly. You can see this here, 2000 grams, 4000 grams, 1000 grams. So this here may already be enough water. Just as simple as that and that was at one time speed just so we are clear so i'm going to turn this here off we can always put a little bit more in later if we have to we can pick this here up and the water here is as expected going to freeze immediately but the general idea for this is that we are taking the heat over here on the left from our thermal aqua tuner and that is actually going to heat up this water which will in turn heat up this ice here which then in turn will heat up this granite and it just needs to reach positive temperatures that's all we need so it does not freeze our water that is our entire goal so as soon as we have that achieved we are perfectly fine and on the right we have way too much water already so we are going to turn this here off so right at the moment we are just waiting for this here to properly heat through and now after waiting and closely monitoring the system here for about a quarter cycle or so, maybe a little bit longer than that, we are perfectly fine. Look at this here. Yeah, all the water is liquid. So let's inspect it a little bit closer. 600 grams, 600 grams. Yeah, that is all looking pretty decent. Still a little bit much though. So I'm going to have a dupe come by and mop here. Let's make it a number nine priority that actually happens. Just like picking up this water right here. And the bottle emptiers can now go. We definitely don't have a use for them anymore. And then next on the list is that we go into our F2 overlay, grab us a conductive wire and hook these two here up. It is now time to create a vacuum. Now we do not want to heat the atmosphere anymore. All we want to heat is this water right here. That is what we want to heat as much as possible. And we can see that our polluted water is still at about 33.4 degrees Celsius. So there's no problem with that at all. Our thermal aqua tuna will have plenty to do. Don't worry about that whatsoever. 
So we can actually start the next phase and that is in our F6 overlay and that is this pipe right here. Yes, this insulated pipe coming from the two middle steam turbines, we need to come out and connect it to this pipe right here, which is completely empty because it's all in the system. How much did we get in here? 4,978. Uh, that was pretty lucky, I would say. So let's see. Okay, there's a little bit stuck. Yeah, that would explain it. Yeah, okay. I thought I got it perfectly right, but it turns out I didn't. What we need to do is we need to get rid of uh, this piece right here. And then we need to put in, in plumbing, a liquid vent right here. Then the bridge here, we need to reverse it, put it back in. And then all this polluted water here can exit. But then we are going to reuse this pipe here and just connect it to right here. Because this pipe here goes straight all the way up into our reservoir. Therefore, that is perfect that this pipe already had to be here one way or another anyway. But all we are doing right now is just waiting for this area here to become a vacuum. And now towards the end of cycle 549, yes, we have our vacuum. That goes really quickly with this vacuum pump here. God, I love this thing. So let's tear it out. We don't need it anymore. And then we can deconstruct this here and this here. We don't need it anymore. And then F6, no, not in F6, in F7, we can deconstruct all of it. We don't need any of it anymore. And that is the last thing we are going to do. Because next on the list is we are going to close off these metal tiles right here and we are going to close off these metal tiles right here. Before that, we need to dig up this granite right here, of course. And, highly important though, we need to make sure that we are turning on our thermal aqua tuner. So we're going to say above negative five degrees, that is perfect, and we are going to just let it have at it. That is all we're going to do at this point. So, dupes, come by, and then we can close this thing here off. Yes, and now last but not least, the steam vent is currently overpressured, so we are waiting for this message here to disappear, kind of just like that. Let's make sure it actually goes idle, which it should, and then we can give a dig command right here. And the dig command, we're going to give it a number nine priority, a duke should come by here in no time and actually get this here done, and then we can also give the commands to build the metal tiles. And that is then going to, well actually you can't because I do want to get rid of this one piece of granite first, that is going to be a priority and then we are going to close it off and then we are going to close the left side off as well we're literally just closing the entire system as it is and that will be the end of it so let's make sure that happens that is gone good number nine priority on this one in our f6 though we cannot forget to actually build a liquid bridge so we're just going to grab this one here that's perfectly fine and we're going to turn it around just like that and then we can also immediately build a pipe all the way down. And when it is done, I'm going to snip it off if this here is not done first. Either way around, it will be perfectly fine. So let's make sure all this here gets done before our steam vent here actually erupts again. And right now, we should have the moment of truth here any second. Yes, when this steam vent here erupts, we will see if the system will turn on properly. Everything should be connected. Everything should be ready to roll. Come on, steam vent let's make it happen let's turn up the speed a little bit to make sure this here actually gets done come on steam wind how long can the pressure be rising before you actually erupt my friend there we go we have it and immediately these two here turn on and we can see that the water is flowing all along this pipe right here we're gonna follow it all the way to the left all the way here and then right there this connection here is already gone the polluted water has exited all this here is completed and the water can exit safely but will it be stable? Because the right side here has to heat up quite a lot, but that should be perfectly fine. So let's speed it up and make sure that we survive the first cycle here as we should. That would be the general idea. And here we have it. Yes, within the first cycle, we have actually made it happen. All four of them are running as they should. And now the system here is completely self-contained and stable. There's nothing else to do here. All the water can exit on the middle two steam turbines. And on the right side over here, we are generating energy just like on the left. And our thermaco tuner here should also not be constantly running as soon as the water in the pipe here is cooled down. Currently still at 18 degrees. So actually filling this reservoir here to the brim may have overdone it, but it is also not going to hurt anything, so it doesn't matter. Now the steam vent here turns off, or better to say goes idle but our two steam turbines above it do turn off completely. No more water is being generated. And now all that is keeping us alive right now is residual heat. 
That is it on the right side, and on the left side, of course, the Thermo Aqua Tuner. But we are generating energy, and we can actually also analyze it, not right now, but whenever it goes dormant. So whenever I notice it to go dormant, and all the steam here will eventually disappear, because if no heat is generated, the Thermo Aqua Tuner will turn off, so the steam will become water. It's just a question of time. We can dig back in, then analyze it, close it back up, and head back outside. It's literally that simple. And this is how we start up a steam vent tamer. Once again, if you want to see it built, I have done that in the last video. One thing that I forgot just a, well, tiny little bit is our autonomous rocket right here. Yes, that is a problem, but it's okay. It has landed all by itself. It doesn't need a dupe. Once again, to reiterate, and our large solid oxidizer tank here should be refilled with fertilizer. The large fuel tank is already full. And let's take a look here. The trailblazer module has already been rebuilt. That's very good. And do we have fresh diamonds in here? Yes, that has been done as well. So the cargo bay, the cargo bay right now says it's an unreachable storage, but it's very simple. We can just click on empty storage and all the stuff is just going to fall right here. Of course, we could automate it, but that's perfectly fine. We're just going to have some dupes to it. And now all we have to do is wait for some fertilizer and send this thing here straight back out to space. But that is all I have for you today. So if you enjoyed this little combination out of a tutorial as well as a let's play, leave a like on the video, leave a subscription on the channel, and of course, comment down below and let me know what you think. And with that, I say thank you and peace.